Okay, let's stand and... Just be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can s stay where you're seated, but we want to just take a little time in prayer and recognize the importance of prayer in our lives and never ever get condemned by the devil in, the, in that area because if you pray 30 seconds a day, ask God to give you grace for 60 seconds. If you pray five minutes, ask God for grace for 10 minutes. And just realize that Spurgeon said prayer is like a cannonball that's shot from the cannon of the church at the gates of heaven. And literally, Satan fears the newest, weakest saint prayer because they're praying to an omniscient, omnipresent, all-powerful God. Amen? Just like the, the uh, just uh, God help me or God save that person, God heal that person. David's prayer. You know, you know what I love about David in Psalm 109? He said, it says this in the King James, I give, I give myself to prayer, but give myself is in italics. It's not in the original Hebrew. He just simply said, I'm prayer. I'm prayer. And so our life is a prayer unto God, and God hears our prayers. We said um, there was a couple, and they told me that they were coming off the mission field because they really did not want to go into debt, and they only had half the money to stay there on a monthly basis. Then I said, let's pray, and let's really believe that God's going to do a miracle. And somebody called them and said, I'm giving you a house, and not only am I giving you the house, but the people that rent the house I'm giving you, that's going to go towards your support. And they had now double the money they needed. See, this is, this is an answer to prayer. So really, I, I want to believe tonight that God hears my prayers and that God listens, and God, his ear is open to the cries of his people. Exodus 2, 25 through 30, it says they were crying and moaning and sighing and groaning, and their groans and sighs and moans came up to God, and he sent Moses. God's answer to the prayer was Moses. Sometimes God's answer is a little bit different than we would even want or imagine, but God hears the prayer and he brings the answer. So if you're led by God, you can go to somebody all the way from that side to that side or whatever, or stay right where you are and pray with the person next to you or quietly just stand or sit and pray. Father, thank you tonight for the weapon of all prayer. We often hear about the armor of God, the six pieces, but the seventh piece of armor is praying always with all supplication. So we pray tonight. We ask in quietness and in confidence. Elijah prayed and it stopped the rain and Elijah prayed again and it rained. Three and a half years. And when the man said there's no rain, he said go again, go again, go again, go again. Seven times. So we pray tonight. Thank you. Feel free to move about. Thank you, God. Pray for salvation of souls. Pray for the city of Baltimore. Deliverance from sin and evil, drugs and alcohol a lifestyle that's contrary to God. Deliverance from all the addictions we've been speaking about. Thank you, God. Give us divine initiated contacts in this city, God, with churches. We thank you for those two new churches that are co-laboring with us on Saturdays and the great opportunity that's ahead for us 
to actually meet with 80 churches in Baltimore City. We pray, God, that you would initiate and you would make that happen. Father, thank you. Thank you that we have a throne of grace. We pray for sickness tonight, God. In Jesus' name, through his blood, that you would heal tonight. He sent his word to heal. Heal tonight, God. Praying always. Never give up. Keep receiving from God. Touch this city, God. Bless your Khan. People traveling. Eliminate any visa situations, any problems. Financial situations. Intervene, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things from your word. That the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. One awesome prayer is, God, show me who you are in the scriptures. In the body. Help people as they make decisions to hear your voice, to be still and know that you are God. Decisions about their calling, decisions about going forward in the purpose of God, decisions. Help us to be led by the Holy Spirit. No matter how strange or difficult it may seem to be, that we would be led by you. Pray for our missionaries around the world tonight from the Philippines to Argentina, South America, every country there, God, the vision to reach these countries. We pray for that new group of people in Nicaragua, the new work in Bangladesh and Bhutan, the registration in Botswana, the brand new church in Harare, Zimbabwe, God, we pray for your will to be done in the situation in the Ukraine, God. Jesus, intervene. Save souls, God. Save souls. Pray for the adventure of faith into Oman, Kuwait, Qatar, the Emirates, the Middle East, God. The 
the great mission in Turkey. Pray for our brothers and sisters in the Kansas City Baptist Churches, God. So we heard from them today and just their excitement about supporting the work in India. Thank you for their, those churches there, God. Pastor Shelby, Pastor Miles, the different pastors there, God. Bless their churches in Kansas City. church in Miami tonight. Their Bible college classes. What a blessing. They have a church and a Bible school already. Bless Pastor Ken there. Pray for families tonight, God. Real oneness of purpose, marriages, families. Thank you, God. Just stand and lift your hands to God tonight. As we prepare for the word tonight, thank you. Just thank him. Just thank him. Thank you that you hear our prayers. Thank you that you are merciful to us. We are sinners saved by grace, beseeching and begging and speaking to a holy God on the throne of grace. What a privilege we have. What a privilege we can come boldly. God, hear our prayers. Praise him tonight. Let's tell him thank you. Thank him for salvation. Thank him for a church. Thank you that we can read a Bible in this country. Thank you that we can fellowship. Thank you that we can tell people about Jesus and not have to do it secretly. Thank you that there's freedom for Christianity in this country. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for heaven is our home. Thank you. The earth is your footstool. Thank you. Thank you, God. No weapon formed against us can prosper. Thank you, God. No weapon. No weapon. The enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. Thank you. We say thank you. We can swim in floods. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We stay afloat by grace. Thank you, God. Father, bless Pastor Schaller as he comes to open the word. Give us an ear to hear. Help us not to be mentally distracted in any way, to concentrate and to hear what the Spirit says to the church tonight. That's what Revelation 2 and 3 says. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thank you that you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right. Uh, would you stand again just for a moment? Boy, this is a exercise time tonight. Just stand up just for a moment and just say to your neighbor, you're looking good tonight. God bless you. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God, praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Great. <clears throat> Would you turn in your Bibles, please, to the Song of Solomon? You may be seated now. Uh, how many of you are 
are uh, praying for the country of Afghanistan. You're praying for Afghanistan. Yeah. All right. Would you would you do that this month? Really be praying for the country of Afghanistan because of love, because we love people, because God loves us, and He hears our prayers, and He cares. Does God care? God cares. Uh, turn to Proverbs. We, we, we're going to go to Song of Solomon in a moment, but turn to Proverbs, please. And this portion, love works. Proverbs chapter 24. Love works. Do you, do you remember the message on Sunday? Uh, I think I lost my pen. There it is. Pastor Jason is taking over Pastor Steve's job. Did you find it, Pastor? <laughs> He's learning. He's on a... There we go. Yeah. It doesn't look like it, does it? Yeah. Does it? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. 24... Verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Have you ever looked at something and God spoke to you about it? Uh, prayer tonight, Pastor Shabelli and his words on prayer and the Spirit speaking to us about prayer. And I believe that marriages can be affected by prayer. I really do. When we were praying tonight, I was thinking, uh, what, what is prayer? What can prayer do? And if I'm divorced, I know that prayer is powerful for a divorcee, a single woman or a single man, for an unmarried person, for a school, a Bible college, a missionary, a pastor, a person off the street. Prayer is powerful because love, we said Wednesday or Sunday, that God made a universe, but he could not make the universe love him. He made a universe, but he could not make it, cause it in the sense of pushy love. Remember, we had the three motivations, push and carry. And what was the third one? Draw. When God made man, he cannot push him to love him. I remember uh, in one country, a man and his wife, he wouldn't let his wife go out shopping by herself. Why wouldn't he let his wife go out shopping by herself? Anybody know? Jealousy, insecurity. He did not trust her. In our culture, of course, Cultures are different, but and it could be different reasons. Maybe safety. A woman shouldn't be alone. And we understand that. But if it is that I don't trust you, then, then the relationship is broken or frozen or stale or mechanical, 
you don't trust me? No, I don't trust you. Then the relationship is not what we read in Song of Solomon. And the reason why we love that poem of Song of Solomon is because it's about desire. And desire is really what life is about. A man and a woman desire. Young man in school desire. Man at work, what does he want? What does he desire? Saturday comes on the calendar, what do I want? What do I desire? And if God made the world and made us, and he cannot, he cannot make us love him, he does not force us because that would be empty. It would be a mechanical operation if it is not in our heart. What is in our heart, this is what life is. Proverbs 4 and verse 24, we read there that keep your heart with all diligence because out of it is the issues of life. Abraham Lincoln said to a friend in 1848, he said, I've lost the gem of my character because I cannot execute my resolves. And until I get that back, I can do nothing. Profound statement. Have you ever lost your motivation or your resolve? Have you ever lost your desire or your focus? I have. Here in this parable it says, I looked at a field and it was all grown in in a house and fallen over and a stone wall broken down. And I looked at it and I received instruction. It taught me a lesson. A broken house in the countryside, a boat on the shore, a car, I saw a car once in a junkyard and a tree was growing through the front seat of the car in a junkyard. And we can see how life can deteriorate and how it has to be maintained. And that the real way of maintaining life is not through science, it is through love. Watch this. This is interesting. In the world of science, there is a lot of analysis and counting and measuring and suspicion. Suspicion, I don't know if I can spell it right. So I'll scribble it. <laughs> Suspicion. Oh, wow. I don't know. What is it? See, I got it right. All right. Why is there suspicion? Because the premise of science is it's not true until it can be proven to be true. If you can prove it to be true, then it's true. Have you seen that in the world of science? If you can prove it to be true, then it's true. But if it can't be proven, then we don't accept it as true, maybe theoretically or by hypotheses, but not proven to be factual. If you treat people that way, you lose. Because God is different, and God does this. God, he says, I love you. When he says, I love you, now he isn't suspicious. He is trusting. When he says, I love you, he is looking at you 
with the desire to draw you to love. He draws you by his love. It's an interesting, you take the mentality of a scientist and you bring it into human relationships and you don't have very, very you don't have a lot of activity because there isn't the trust. But you bring the Spirit of God into a relationship and you have trust. When you have trust, you have relationship. Now, I, I'm speaking generally here, and, and science is an awesome part of our world, and I don't contest it. I just say it's not enough. Science is not enough for life the way God made it. God made us to be more than scientific. He made us to love. He made us for a relationship. He made us so that we could be with him. That he would trust us. He would love us. He would forgive us. He would draw us. Here the parable goes this way. Look at it with me. This is what he learned, verse 33. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come as one that travels and thy want as an armed man. This is really a parable about not acting not doing anything, not loving, not investing, not caring. How important it is to care, to love, to go, to give, to pray, to believe, to be active in our hearts. Because our hearts are huge. Oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Because God is the God of the heart. And God has put in our hearts love. We are learning love. Listen to a few things. Turn to Song of Solomon now, please, with me. I don't want this to sound too philosophical. I don't mean it that way. But think of this picture. We've drawn it many times. You have law and man working to make it to God by work. And this over a period of time. Do you remember that diagram? Working, climbing the ladder by law. This is a man living by law. The law. And we fall into the world of law so easily. We're very hard on ourselves. We fall into a world of bondage so easily we condemn ourselves. We so easily are guilty over our lives. We are sometimes frustrated by ourselves by our life, what we have done, what we have not done. And it, it, it doesn't move the heart of man, but this is what God did. God so loved the world that he gave Christ, that Christ came to us. When? When did he come? Romans 5. When we were dead, Ephesians 2, verse 1. When we were without strength, when we had no way, we had no power, we were ungodly, Christ died for us. Christ was raised from the dead, and we with him. All this is by grace, through faith not of ourselves, the gift of God. Why, why would God do that? 
Why would he love us with an unconditional love? Why would he say, I save you, I save you? God says, I save you. I give you myself. If I spared not my own son, but I gave him for you, how will I not with him freely give you all things? What things, God? Day-to-day -day fellowship, communion. I will draw you, not push you. I will draw you by my love. Song of Solomon 1, verse 2. Let him kiss me. Let him kiss me. Do you like those words? Let him kiss me. This is God saying, this is the woman saying to God, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. It is how this, the poem begins by, is this science? You know, is this science? Or is this, is this more? Is this, this is with people. What, what do you find with people? Mom and dad, little child. Right? What is science when it comes to kisses? Science is fine. Saliva, pressure, <laughs> tissues of different kinds. Science is fine. But it cannot define for me uh, what we could call a very human hunger and desire in our heart. I have a hunger and a desire in my heart. And God is the God that made us with desires. That we have desires. That we desire food, we desire sleep, we desire love, we desire knowledge. We desire relationships. We desire to be forgiven. But we, we can't say it. Like, would you please forgive me? Of course we can say it. It is amazing when God so loved the world that he sent his son. And his son is like this kind. His son is the one that gets in your heart and says, I forgive you. I love you. I am God. I am the God that made you. And I am the God that puts in you the desire for me. You see, I couldn't make a universe that would love me because they had to. I made a universe so that I could come, and if you know me, you will love me. And if you love me, it will affect you deep in your desires. I will carry you. I will draw you. I will speak to you. I will love you. The believers through history who have found this relationship, they go on and on and on. And they grow deeper, and they know more, and they love God very much. And the fruit of their life is seen in their hearts and in their words and in their footsteps. They are people that love God more than they love life. They have found Christ to be so real and so important to them that it motivates them. They come through traffic to be here. They get, a, they get on the phone and they say, I love you. They remove the air between us and our relationships by stepping in with a big smile or with a big heart or with kind words. They are people of God. We are the people of God. And I want him, this is the message for us, 
We want him to kiss us with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine. Why wine? Because wine affects your nervous system. And so does his love. It affects your nervous system. And then lastly here, verse 3 and 4, because of the savor of thy good ointments, that's the fragrance of your perfume self, your name is his ointment poured forth. We can say his name. Jesus. Sometimes, just driving the car, we say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we stop, we say his name, and it's like a fragrance spiritually, an ointment on our body, on our soul, in our spirit. We know the Spirit of God that honors the name of Jesus Christ. We know the Spirit of God that, that is all over this book and saying to us things that motivate us and affect our desires. It says, therefore, do the virgins love you because you are clean, you are powerful, you are awesome, you are God, you are a gentleman, you are not pushy. We are being drawn. You know how a woman is with a man that is pushy? Yuck, right? Like there's a, a woman and a man is pushy and she shuts down, defends herself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Huh? Runs. Locks herself in a room. How about that? Why? Because she has great radar. And she has a sense, do you honor me? Do you respect me? Do you have any sense of honor towards me as a woman? Do you carry my dignity in your heart? Do you care about me? Do I have free will? Do you have any sense of who I am and do you love me for who I am? Well, wouldn't God be the greatest gentleman? The one that would honor our innate dignity? Wouldn't God say, I cannot force you? Wouldn't God say, I cannot hammer you? I cannot get on your case, and I cannot bury you with my law and my condemnation? Wouldn't God be saying, you can't do it, folks, but I will do it for you, and I will love you. And when you are loved, then you'll be motivated when you are motivated, you will love me and invite me to kiss you with the kisses of my mouth. You will call upon my name and it will fill your house with fragrance. Uh, you, you will be drawn to me and you will love me more than you have ever loved anything. Because it will be my Holy Spirit in you that will love me and honor me. And both of us will dance in life together. Both of us. You and me. Us together in the body. I am your God. You are mine. I, and I am yours. And this is the deep motivation that every human being can ask a child. When a child says, Mommy, you know, Mommy. And then they, they give their complaint and the mother scoops up the child and there it is that's life that's love that's need that's mom and child don't leave it that's the kingdom of God Christ said these children this is how it is but we are adults. We are not children, but we are adults. But we are also built for uh, a deep love, a kind love, a generous love, a gracious love. We are built for wisdom and deep encouragement. We're built for God to speak and whisper. 
with a still small voice. We're built for God to love us. Do you love me, Lord? And he, he's there, like, quietly, really, powerfully present. Do you love me, Lord? And he, it's like, there he is. And he, he's saying to us, do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Yes, Lord. That's what you are looking for. You got it. You got it. We believe you and we love you. And this is why we love each other with the same love. And why people believe that Jesus came, not as a prophet, but as the Christ, not as a good teacher, but as the living Savior, that is why people believe that Christ is the answer, the way, the truth, and the life, because we love each other from our hearts. We're here on a Wednesday night because it is in our heart. We're going to pray tonight and in the morning because it'll be in our heart. And if it isn't, 